This dash is not trying to take the digital gold positionings. Rather, they're going to focus on the cryptocurrency you know, project. So price stability is one of the key elements here. And about the price stability, actually, you know, DAI is the most powerful one here. DAI's is price volatility is higher than Bitcoin or gold here, not that strong. Based on this analysis, Dash from the digital gold project perspective, they can compete with Bitcoin. And about the community currency project, they can compete with DAI. I'm Mr. Masa. So today's investment review for the Dash token code is Dash, D-A-S-H. Okay, so let's start. So this is my portfolio strategy as usual. So I only allocate my assets to the Bitcoin and all the altcoins which is related to these six categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my portfolio strategy, please check out my other video about my portfolio strategy. Okay. And today's Dash is categorized here. Digital gold, limited supply model. This is the most important industry layer in the blockchain space. Okay. And as usual, I'm going to apply the six analytical points for each altcoin analysis. So starting from the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 here. So the total score is 30 points at the maximum level. Okay. And then number one, pain point analysis. And for the digital gold type of the project, we mainly have two pain points. And the first one is this one. The single key currency, US dollar based world economy is too risky and not sustainable. Let me tell you why. So let's start from this one. Dollar dominates central bank reserves. So these data from IMF, they can summarize central bank foreign reserves on each currency based one. And the blue one is US dollar, orange one is Euro, and the sky blue is UK pond, and the yellow is Japanese yen, gray is Chinese renminbi. And then the data from 2009, 2015, and 2019. And as you can clearly see that, US dollar dominates over 60% market share last decade. So literally, US dollar is a world single key currency. And what does it mean? This one. The trust behind our local currency is heavily reliant on the US dollars. Because one of the key mission of the central banking system is they're gonna take care of the money supply in a local currency. And this is a balance sheet of the central banking system. Every single central banking system will take the same approach. When they're gonna issue the new currency, it's actually reliability. So they're gonna put the new currency here. So they need the backup assets when they're gonna issue the new currency. And usually, they're going to put the US dollar or US bond here for their backup assets. When you look at the emerging economy, this mechanism is much more popular. Which means those local currency trusts heavily rely on the trust of the US economy itself. But here's a big problem. The government leadership in the US does not always work properly. This is the three US president in the last decades. For example, Barack Obama is a great leader. He made the amazing tractions as US president. But when you look at the other case, you know, US president heavily you know, controlled by military industry or crude oil industry, or in other cases, eventually the populist became the US president. And in that case, US economy all the time experienced a serious financial crisis. And then because of that, those emerging economy who are seriously rely on the US economy itself or the trust, they're gonna experience a much worse financial crisis. So this is not a sustainable, right? It's too risky for us. So here are the solutions. Critical demand for the decentralized financial infrastructure post US dollars. So current, our world economy is just like this. In center, US economy, US dollar based in one here, and a local economy is just like this. So once US economy experiences serious trouble here, other local economy will be heavily damaged by this US economy manufacturing stuff. So it's just like, you know, credit server model in a computer science world. So what do we want to achieve the blockchain? It's just like this. Purely P2P network financial infrastructure. So no reader inside, that is why this financial infrastructure have no risk about 
centralization risk model here. So it's going to be much more sustainable. Okay. And then paper number two. Capitalism causes structural poverty and the economic discrepancy in the human society. Let me tell you why. This one. Capitalism harms human society over two centuries. This is the most well-known visualization of the capitalist society itself. Simply say, the money is a king. And one of the critical pain points in capital society is actually this one. Capitalists are just mutual exploitation player for human wealth redistributions. Okay? To help you understand you know, the meaning of this sentence, actually we have great analogy on the internet. So before the internet, TV was a major media format. And then artists, when they want to create the contents and distribute to the audience user here, there is a mutual exploitation here, such as artist productions, TV channel, advertiser. So artists cannot directly distribute the content to the user side. They have to deal with these mutual exploitation players. These mutual exploitation players decide which artist or which artist content should be distributed to the user side. Okay? So because of this, Lots of lots of artists have been facing serious difficulty distributing the contents to the user side. Then internet make this one fully decentralized. So internet space, when you look at the text media for the web plus, picture media for the Instagram, video media for the YouTube, no one stop you to create the contents and to distribute the user side, right? Even not artists, like me or like you, can create the contents and distribute the contents to the user side here. How then a popularity mechanism you know, functioning inside this ecosystem? Only by user. By like or share those functions, we're going to decide which artist contents distribute the more user side. So fully democratized and decentralized model. Okay? And one of the typical example you know, as a successful case is you know, Iska Lawrence on the internet. So she is a model, told us she was too big and unceremoniously dropped by her model agency, has a following of over 3 million on Instagram, as in now fronting American Eagle Outfitter latest regularly campaign. So the mutual exploitation player, model agency, try not to sell her to the user side. But she did it by herself, by using internet media. Right? So this is exactly what will happen in a blockchain space. Just like this. So this is the old mechanism here, and this is the new mechanism here. Old mechanism, all the user, like me or like you, when we have extra assets, we're going to usually deposit those money to the bank. But there is another user here that they need those money, such as for you know, starting a new business, or buying a new car or house. But those users here, like me or like you, doesn't have any rights, those you know, money allocations to those user side. These mutual exploitation players decide, such as banker, venture capitalist, credit scoring companies. So with the blockchain technology, we're going to eliminate those mutual exploitation, like user filtering mechanism here, just exactly happen on the internet. So, you know, here's a great investment opportunity to hear that, you know, new care application, just like, you know, Instagram, YouTube, for, you know, those kind of fintech space, huge potential here, okay? And then when you look at the old system here, this is a typical problem happening here. So George Floyd death is actually a very typical example caused by structural poverty. Because, you know, black people in America usually have to live in a poverty area. And the criminal ratio in the poverty area is much higher than safe area where white people live. So that is why even black people try to open their bank accounts or try to access the normal financial service or something, the banker hesitate to allow you know, them to use those kind of financial services or to open bank accounts. And one of the most typical examples is insurance program. Since you know, their criminal ratio in the poverty area is much higher than safety area, even black people can join the same you know, insurance program, they have to pay much more expensive insurance fee than those people who are living in the safe area. 
especially by white people. It's a huge economic discrepancy and unfair mechanism model here, right? This is caused by capitalist society. And when you look at the all over the world, it's a much serious problem happening here. So in a world, we have world unbanked, which means adults cannot have a bank account in a global basis. It's 2.5 billion people. Huge amount of number. When you look at the Latin America, over 65% of adults cannot have bank accounts. In South America, over 80%. Southeast Asia, over 67%. In a world population total is over 53% of the adults cannot have bank accounts, cannot access to the normal financial services. It's a serious problem. How can we solve this problem? Our society currently, you know, built by all the economy here, it's capital society. So the capital society doesn't have any potential or any capability to solve this kind of problem. So, we have to create a new social system here, post-capitalist society. To build this kind of a new capitalist system, we need the money, assets, a lot, especially for the human resources, to build the new social system. So, we need the effective catalyst here as a mutual player that they're gonna attract these existing assets in a capitalist society with the inflation model, with a, in a digital gold or limited supply, to the new capital society here. So this is a critical role. This the goal is a limited supply model in the blockchain space. And then based on understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. So before moving to the detail, let's you know, briefly review about the history of the Dash. So the Dash is referred to the Bitcoin core technology itself and it's starting January 2014. And here is a three key unique feature of the Dash project compared with the Bitcoin from the technical perspective. First one is their mining algorithm, consensus algorithm, is not the SHA-256, which is used by Bitcoin. Instead, they're going to integrate the 11 hash functions such as Blake and Shervite. And then the purpose is this one, for more network robustness. Okay? And then there is no trade-off just like it happened in Litecoin, so this is a good choice. And the second one is this one, block confirmation time. So Bitcoin requires 10 minutes on average, but Dash only requires 2.5 minutes, so this is another good achievement. This is actually the greatest one. So the consensus algorithm the Dash is based on proof of based one, but they're gonna apply master mode model, just like, you know, DPoS model, delegate proof of stake model, or just like in the Cosmos. Total incentives of the you know, mining blocks, first it goes to the miner, 45%, but they also selected the master nodes here, and if it requires some you know, specific deposits with the Dash to join this master net network, they're gonna also take a specific like, selection process by voting mechanism, and then they can get you know, less of the 45%, but also additional 45%. So the master node return is the biggest one. And then less of the 10%, it actually goes to the DAO, chooses by board mechanism. So these 10% sometimes go to the promotion of the Dash project, sometimes go to like, you know, marketing campaign. Some, you know, these money sometimes go to the promotion of the Dash you know, model, or sometimes go to the merchant reward program or something. So this is a very effective DAO mechanism. And then about detail stuff, let me explain, you know, later in the token economy, okay? And as usual, Borokai proportional analysis. So Dash is here, and then Bitcoin here, and the gold here, and then stablecoin DAI, powered by DAO here. First things I want to pay attention to this one, fast move advantage. Because this is one of the critical elements in the cryptocurrency industry. And then, since Bitcoin is the world's first cryptocurrency and blockchain technology project, so they can take the fast move advantage for the digital gold project. No other cryptocurrency player can take this advantage, okay? So Dash, DAI can, cannot take it. And also the digital gold project perspective, DAO is so critical. And the second one is diversity of the miner, should be more distributed. And compared with gold, cryptocurrency has two major advantages here about fake protections and the portability with a lower security cost, okay? 
Since DAS is not trying to take the digital gold positionings, rather they're gonna focus on the cryptocurrency you know, project. So price stability is one of the key elements here. And about the price stability, actually, you know, DAI is the most powerful one here. DAS is price volatility is higher than Bitcoin or gold here, not that strong. Based on this analysis, DAS from the digital gold project perspective, they can compete with Bitcoin. And about the community currency project, they can compete with DAI. For more detail about the fast move advantage, this one. So this is a market cap of Bitcoin, all the other cryptocurrencies which is similar to the Bitcoin, and the DAS is here. So, you know, Bitcoin's market cap is outstanding. And this is the power of the fast move advantage, okay? And when you look at the other project or industry layer, we can say the same things in a bus, you know, project too. So Ethereum is a world first bus project, right? This one is a, you know, total market cap of the East Bros project. And then orange one is a pure market cap of the Bros project itself. And the blue one is a, aggregated market cap of all the DAFs which is running on each bros project. So Ethereum is this one. Outstanding. This is another example about how the fast mover advantage is hugely influential in this industry. Okay? And then, you know, minus diversity between Bitcoin and the Dash is here. As you can see here, Bitcoin mining pool is much more diverse than Dash. So Bitcoin is much more sustainable mining industry perspective, okay? And then copy with gold. So no one can fake cryptocurrency because of proof of work algorithm, okay? For gold, you can take this kind of fake model here. So this is one of the critical advantage compared with gold for Rust result asset perspective. And the second advantage is this one, portability and lower security cost. You can buy gold, of course, but it's just only price. Let's say, for example, you're gonna buy 100 kilogram of gold, but you cannot carry them out. Of course, you can wear the gold watch or gold necklace or something, but it's put you in danger because but someone will come to you and kill you and try to get those your gold item stuff. Lots of security risk here, right? But when you look at the cryptocurrency, once you're gonna put your private key inside of this you know, USB device, and you're gonna put the password here, no one can kill you. Because once they're gonna kill you, they can't get this password, all right? So much more lower security cost, and then you can take these millions of assets inside the US memory, whatever what amount of assets you're gonna have it, you can carry them out all over the world. This is another advantage of the crypto assets from last result asset investment perspective, okay? And the third one, Kimura assets. So these two guys is a key member or founding member of the Dash project. First one is Evan, and the second one is Kyle. And Evan is kind of the owner of the Folk Financial Group, and he used to be the ex-software engineer at the Wells Fargo Bank. Both are actually trying to eliminate themselves from the you know, developer community or foundation activity of the Dash project. So I'm gonna tell you the detail later, you know, token economy, but actually this is great, okay? And then number four, execution point analysis. As I told you that, since Bitcoin has a great fast move advantage of the digital gold project here, for Dash, it's almost kind of unrealistic idea to take the same positioning of the Bitcoin as a digital gold. So instead, Dash looks like a focus on community currency business. Because when you look at the Dash website, all the time they're gonna be opinion about how many merchants they're gonna use the Dash coin itself, just like in a community currency. But when you take this approach, community currency market, here's a big rival. This one, local bars project. Tomochain is a good example. They based on the Vietnam, and most of the founding members come from Vietnam, so they seriously focus on Vietnam market. Their bars project is completely similar to the you know, Ethereum project, but the computing resources here is also local computing resources. And the application, they're gonna focus on local apps like local Airbnb, local Uber. So from this perspective, you know, these local bus project, huge rival to the Dash from the community currency business perspective. And uh, which one has a higher potential? This approach or this approach? 
What I'm thinking about, local bus project has much higher potential. Why? Because it's both. They can take in care of a variety of use case with the application model. Then they're gonna use those, those each application use Tomocoin, just like a community currency. Much more higher potential about the community currency business staff in long term. Okay. And then number five, token economy analysis. And then this is the token economy design matrix which I made. And then this is actually for more on an altcoin project. So I don't apply this, you know, token economy matrix for this or gold type of the project. But for Dash project, we can think about this stuff: network effects and governance here. Okay. And about network effects, the reference is actually Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin network effects is kind of simple. Once world economy experiences serious financial crisis and more and more, a lot of people move their assets to the cryptocurrency here, Bitcoin. Why? Just like this. Because our current economy based on the capitalist system, so once capitalist system itself you know, put themselves into danger, financial crisis stuff, Lots of people move their assets to the Bitcoin and the extra assets move the post capitalist system here on top of the blockchain. That is why. Okay. And about the DAO, here's a big issue. And a good case study about the Linux by Linux Torvalds. The Linux is a very successful OS software with an open software program in a global basis. And which is invented by Linux Torvalds, a genius programmer who are living in North Europe. Linux is a great software as open software project, but from DAO perspective, it's completely failed. Why? Because you know, Linux have lots of lots of developers in their community. And every single time new proposals are coming up, who's gonna decide? He decide. So centralization leadership risk is here. Fortunately, Linux have dozen financial assets you know, as a software project, so we don't have any kind of financial crisis risk. Not gonna happen in Linux. But in a crypto space, it's actually happened. So in case study one, Ethereum. So Ethereum is created by Bitrick, and Bitrick itself is a you know, great software engineer and computer scientist. But in 2017, someone posted on a full channel on a fake news. And he said Bitrick body found dead by a car accident. It's a fake news. And then, but because of this fake news, Ethereum price is crashed 17% for a few hours. It's huge risk. And then right after that, you know, Bitrick posted his arrive with the latest hash number of the Ethereum blockchain. So, but you know, this is a good example that we have to learn that the, how the decentralized leadership, you know, open software program is so critical. Bitrick is also he's a smart guy, so he tried to avoid his, you know, his bigger influence on the software community. Great action by him, but the things we have to learn about the, how the decentralized readership is so important. And for this perspective, actually the Dash made you know, great achievements. Dash is a completely the same as Bitcoin, so self-funding model here. And how they're gonna allocate the mining reward, as I said, 40% goes to the miner. And another 40% goes to the master node, but the master nodes also can function like miners. Also, master nodes can take 90% in total. Okay? And the rest of the 10% goes to DAO choices by board mechanism, so you know, promotion or something. Okay? And the selection of the master nodes also based on the voting mechanism staff. Master nodes have to deposit some Dash assets, just like in the Cosmos DPoS model. So it's a very sustainable approach. And even developer community, they have around tens of the programmer in the Dash community and holding the process, you know, based on DAO and voting mechanism stuff. Their DAO mechanism itself is well developed one. This is great. Okay. And a hype cycle analysis. As usual, got now hype cycle analysis and the blockchain business 2019 version. And the Dash is categorized here, cryptocurrency. And this one is since close to the real market adaptations, we have to see some potential here. And it seems like Dash made a great achievement the DAO mechanism, so we can see some potential, you know, here, DAO. And then this is the total score. About the pain points, without any questions, 5.0, because the post US dollar financial system is so critical for us, for the post capital system. For the product, since they got a bit, some of the improvements compared with Bitcoin, so I set the 3.0 here. 
and a team, I set the 3.0 here because they're going to develop the very well organized DAO mechanism here. And about execution of power, since you know, compared with local bus project, it's less advantage about their execution model, so I set the 2.0 here. And about token economy, I see the big potential about the DAO mechanism itself, so I set the 3.0 here. And hype cycle, again, DAO is a you know, critical potential of the Dash project, so I set the 3.0 here. So total score is 19 points. So my minimum investment criteria is 25 points. So I can't recommend you know, investing in Dash, but I see some potential of the Dash DAO mechanism itself. You know, critical disadvantage for them is you know, they don't have any function about the local boss you know, functionality itself. So in long term, I think they're going to face a serious problem on their executions. Okay? So that is all this time. I also make lots of interesting videos about crypto and blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.